topic, this is really a very key topic about diet therapy. And if you have the disease and you don't have a dietitian working with you, please insist in it. Because it's very, very important. The dietitian should be part of the team who's managing your disease. And today we have a very, very fortunate colleague uh, who I have co author manuscript with, who is here from LSU, Leanne Byrne, who will be talking to you about this area. It's a very important topic, it's a very important area in the management of your disease. So, Leanne? Thank you, Dr. Gov. I appreciate this opportunity to speak to you today um, and hopefully cover some of the things that many of you who see me in the office, I don't have uh, the time to go through all the end of reasons I tell you to do certain things. So today I hope to spend a little bit more time explaining more about the different sources of nutrition and uh, what they provide. So um, we can uh, get a, a little bit better grasp of what, uh, what we want you to do. So today we're going to talk about diet and natural products therapy for net patients. I got. I need my glasses. Here we go. <laughs> got it. Got to go higher enough. Okay. All right. Today I uh, hope to at least identify natural products and sources of, uh, that have uh, benefits for your health. To just discuss some of the modifications and the preparations that we may have to do to help improve your tolerance of these foods. <coughs> I've got help now. <laughs> and then to discuss some of the safety issues and concerns that we have about herbal supplements. You go to me. So some of the things that we want to remember is that eating the right foods can help with your treatment and making sure that we get the right nutrients in a day can definitely help with some of the side effects you may have and also help your body really build a, uh, your, your system so that you can fight some of these uh, factors uh, and build a good immune system. Uh, but getting this good nutrition is very challenging for patients with neuroendocrine tumors and then so most more than likely for many of you in the room that we're going to have to change a little bit from the normal diet that you've been on and, and to something that you can probably tolerate better. So what I'm going to start today is discussing what the nutrients are and the most important thing that I want you to realize is that uh, the, the amounts of these uh, different foods and types of foods are very important and macronutrients are uh, nutrients that your body needs a large amount of in the day and these are proteins and they can come in forms of animal proteins or in plant proteins they could be we also need large amounts of carbohydrates although we talk about limiting or really changing the types of carbohydrates if you're having some of the symptoms with diarrhea we'll talk more about that as we alter your diet but these give you a great energy source and are very important uh, as your energy for uh, to give you throughout the day these can be complex carbohydrates, which are starches, and these are found in many forms which, uh, throughout your diet. Uh, these digest slowly in your system, and, and if they have, uh, depending on the type of fiber, actually build the bulk of the stool. And then there's simple carbohydrates, and these are usually sugars. It can be just the sugars you've had in your brownies out there, or they can be in fruit juices or in milk sugars, and these are the ones that we usually are changing are, are reducing uh, to reduce some of the uh, diarrhea that you're having. And then there's fats, and fats are two types. They're saturated, those are usually animal sources, and also those medium chain triglycerides, which we have to use in many patients that are having fat malabsorption. But I do mention this because um, sometimes I get asked, why don't you just put everybody on a medium chain triglyceride? Sometimes I do, but it depends on what your history is. These are the same uh, good tasting oils that they took out of all of our crackers several years ago because they decided it increased our heart disease risk. So um, those can be beneficial, but we do watch those a little bit. And then unsaturated, which are your polyunsaturated and your monounsaturated fats, which we know may be very beneficial with heart disease also. And then we have
have micronutrients, and those are things you need just a little bit, small amounts of it throughout the day. They're very important, but we don't need high amounts of these usually. And they can help your body digest or produce enzymes, hormones, and other substances that we need for the growth and development of our body. So these are very important. Um, they can include vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, and other nutrients such as uh, carnitine and um, choline, co uh, enzyme Q10, and then some of our essential fatty acids and uh, lipoic acid. Just to name a few. There's, there's several of these that we'll see. What are the benefits of protein? Well, they're very important. They're the component of every cell in your body. And you're going to need these to be able to maintain the structures and the healing that you're going to be needing, especially when we're ill. Uh, it, the body uses these to repair your tissues and build tissue as we're growing. It also helps as a building block of your bones and your blood and your muscle, <coughs> skin. And it also is used to make these hormones and enzymes and other new, uh, chemicals that are very important that your body's going to need. But your body doesn't store protein, so it's very important that we get protein in our diet every day. And there's a couple of things that I want to make sure that people do know. That the, the belief that extra, getting extra protein will build muscle, this is a myth. The only way to increase the muscle is with exercise. So we want to make sure that even when you're healing from different types of surgeries or during the day, that you're using your muscles because these are going to help give you back that what you may lose when you're losing weight. And then we also want to make sure that you need uh, that you don't uh, need too much protein. A lot of people think you need a lot of protein. A lot of people spend a lot of money at the G, uh, different health food stores trying to get all these special proteins. And, and most of these are just not necessary. You can spend your money in many ways. And, and this is one place that we probably see a lot of money spent that's not worth, uh, worth a while. So most of us you really need, if, uh, if you're uh, not uh, a patient, if you're just some uh, someone like me or some uh, visiting here as a, a, a guest uh, or helping with patients, five to six ounces of meat a day or protein source from any source a day is usually plenty. But for a neuroendocrine patient, we usually have to increase that slightly. Uh, and these can be done with the uh, help of a registered dietitian or your physician. Um, we also know that a high protein, low carbohydrate diet can be harmful. And this isn't when we're just trying to work with the diarrhea that Danny was talking about, but many times these are fads and things that people do to try to lose weight. And I want to make sure that people realize that this can be very harmful. It can produce ketones. Uh, that's how it works. Um, it can produce ammonias. Uh, that can be very confusing uh, and can help, uh, it actually can cause harm, especially if you have a problem with your liver. And also, it increases the uh, calcium that you're losing in your urine. Um, and this uh, can also uh, complicate your care. So small amounts of protein is uh, very important to get. We usually, I try to get uh, meal plans for most of my patients, somewhere between two and three ounces with your meals, and also about one ounce with a snack. And most meal plans that I work with patients I really like you to eat six small feedings throughout the day. One of the biggest problems that we see is uh, with symptoms is that we try to give people real, I mean, people try to get real large meals, and um, and these large meals are associated with the syndromes as much as uh, as any symptom that we that we may have. So I want to make sure that you do small, frequent feedings throughout the day. Give yourself good energy sources all. All the way through but I like to use the protein sources with them that keeps your carbohydrates from throw, throwing your blood sugars up too high uh, and it kind of keeps them also from going too low uh, during, during your uh, day especially if you're very active and then use low fat sources of uh, protein these um, are usually see fats are usually the white part if you're looking at meat and you can see those in beef and in pork and even underneath the skins of your chickens um, there are some very important products that we want you to get, uh, and, and I'm um, going to talk a little bit about how the recommendations go for the amounts. But these are some of the uh, proteins that um, are really help us uh, to keep these healing factors in eggs, poultry, fish, nuts, and seeds. 
and then meats such as uh, beef, pork, and lamb. We're going to talk a little bit more about those. But I want to um, talk a little bit about the recommendation also that we don't want you to do a lot of processed meats. It's the processing of the meats that usually um, progress more to the carcinogenics that we worry about. Egg, I guess if I might add that I put it first, it's probably one of my favorite foods to give my patients. And many times if I you come in to see me, that's one of the first things I say is I want you to try to get an egg every day. And there's so many wonderful nutrients in those eggs and it's got seven, uh, six to seven grams of protein and it's only 70 calories so it can work very well even if we're watching our calories in a day. Um, if you can, you're not fat um, intolerant, you can have the whole egg. There's some great studies that have come out recently, and since I'm uh, pro-egg, uh, these are really great. And one of them was that the, by changing the feed that we've used with eggs through the uh, chickens through the years, we've been able to reduce the cholesterol in the eggs. Where back in 2003, they were around 214 uh, grams of cholesterol in an egg, and now it's down to 187, so that is reduced a little bit. And that that one egg a day in, uh, in recent research uh, is not really shown an increase in heart disease, even compared with people that were not eating eggs. So I do think that there is definitely a room to put the egg in your diet. It has many of the amino acids that, you, uh, are, that are very important and, uh, and can replace uh, other sources of meat if you're not a big meat eater or don't really like to eat the fish. Um, it has vitamins, A, D, E, it has your B vitamins. Um, it also has things that I see people go to the grocery, I mean, to the health food store to get, such as coenzyme Q10. So there's no reason to spend that money. You can get it with just uh, these great nutrients. Uh, and then there's a few things that we want to make sure that you do with eggs, though. So we want you to cook it all the way done. Um, uh, eggs tend to be something that can uh, cause foodborne illnesses if they're raw. So we do try to get you to cook your uh, egg all the way done to prevent contamination. And we also uh, know that it's a little easier to digest if it's already, if it's cooked versus raw. So um, it, that's something to remember. Uh, foodborne illnesses are something that can send you to the hospital with a type of secretory diarrhea we don't want you to have. And then poultry, poultry can count chicken, Turkey, Cornish hens, and many of the game birds, uh, uh, quail, and, and uh, if you're hunters, uh, the pheasants that, that are really can be used and utilized differently in, in your diet and give us a little variety. They have seven grams of protein per ounce. Uh, they also are very high in amino acids, uh, tryptophan, and tyrosine. Sometimes I see people go to buy supplements of that to reduce the amount of mouth sores. If they're, if they're eating those poultry, then that, these can give you uh, the nutrients that you need there. They're also an excellent source of niacin and selenium, and these things we know have been studied in their um, benefits in uh, fighting some of our uh, diseases, including some of the uh, types of cancer, as well as B6 and phosphorus, uh, which are very important for us to get throughout our day. Meats, meats get a pretty bad rap in the, uh, in, in the arena of health, but I uh, think that these can be, play a very important part as long as they're eating in lean form. These can be any of your beef, uh, lamb, goat, pork. Pork, although it's always, they use it, they gave up with the, the other white meat, it really is a red meat. Um, the higher, the, the deeper the red, uh, it's gonna have a little bit more iron, um, zinc, B vitamins, and even some omega-3. And we talk a lot about people who supplement omega-3s. But so, um, so you can even get a little bit here, depending on the feed. And then the American Institute of Cancer Research, who has done great research in the uh, areas of cancer and cancer prevention, has determined, and they have looked through over 1,800 pieces of literature and research, and they came up with a recommendation that as long as we limit our intake to 18 ounces of red meat, including all these forms, including pork, uh, then, um, then this really will not increase our risk of cancers. Uh, but above that, there probably is going to be a link uh, with some of the GI cancer playing with colon. But we still want to avoid the types of uh, meats that are smoked or cured or use high amounts of salt. These are linked to some of the tumors. So, there's also one of my favorites is fish. And I hope that uh, I have fish eaters in the room 
because I think these are very easy to digest and very important uh, nutrient uh, that is low in fat naturally. Uh, with the cold water fish maybe have, will have uh, some more fat when there's omega-3s and these are things that I see people go to the grocery store and buy in bottles all the time and, and you really don't have to do that. You can just consume uh, several uh, fish servings a week uh, to get these important nutrients. So I do encourage you to please try to try fish if you have not done so. Uh, they're, they're, they're a great nutrient uh, and they're packed with things including vitamin D that can help um, uh, help us keep our bones strong and we know vitamin B, uh, D also helps boost our immune system so try to increase that. Uh, dried beans and uh, we talked about trying to do more of a plant-based diet and the, uh, so the proteins that you're going to get from beans and peas uh, are very important and I like to mix these in your diet so some of the beans are a little bit gassy. Uh, red beans and pinto are the two that are the highest, uh, the hardest to digest but uh, the navy beans and uh, lima beans are very important. Split peas split, uh, work very well for patients and are tolerated very well. And they also have uh, properties of anti uh, with uh, important sources of antioxidants and fiber uh, that are very important in our, to help keep our digestive uh, systems um, working correctly. Uh, they also have phytochemicals and phytoestrogens that and this can include soy. Now, if you have breast cancer and any any types of, it's always important to talk to your physicians, but especially if it's a breast cancer type thing, do discuss it with uh, your physician before you start using soy, uh, or especially additional soy products. Nuts are another source of protein, and they're an excellent source of monounsaturated fat. We know that's a very healthy fat for us. Uh, they have very uh, variety of minerals and uh, and vitamins that we want you to get. If you have diarrhea, many times I have to take patients or if you have a small bowel surgeries, the nuts themselves are not easy to digest, and we have to use uh, some of the nut butters, um, peanut butter and cashew butters. And if you're fat intolerant and you've not taken um, any of the pancreatic enzymes, these are things you may not tolerate quite as well. So. So this is, nuts will just depend on your tolerance uh, and, and we can um, help you, uh, dietitians can help you identify those. But they're actually natural anti-inflammatory uh, products, so uh, we really try to use them in diseases of chronic inflammation. They have vitamin E and many of the antioxidants that we uh, are trying to get uh, patients to consume more of in a day without trying to visit the health food store again. Seeds. Seeds. We kind of overlook, I was excited to see them in our salad today. That was a nice addition, a good way to get a few of the seeds in. These things are very high in fiber. Uh, vitamin E, zinc, zinc is very important for healing. Protein uh, is, uh, and, and monounsaturated fats. And again, these are the healthy fats that we're trying to use. Flax seeds are uh, one area where the fiber uh, uh, is, is, is going to help. We always want you to, to crush your flax seeds though. If you're, um, the flax, flax seeds are really only beneficial if, you, uh, if they're broken. Uh, otherwise they just kind of go through you. So make sure that you're grinding your flax seeds if you're using them in your diet. Many people choose to use flax seed oils and these can be added to your foods that you're consuming. Um, and uh, they also uh, are or don't have a strong flavor, so these are easy, pretty easy to try if you haven't tried black seed before. They um, have uh, the omega-3 fatty acids also that we're trying to encourage in the diet. And then there's quinoa, and quinoa took me three days just to learn how to pronounce this word, and took me about another week to learn how to cook with this product. But it's a very important product, I think, to uh, bring uh, to people's minds to try. It um, is a complete protein, and for patients that are particular not uh, going to use the animal sources, this might be a really interesting nutrient for, uh, uh, or food item for you to be using because you can get all the proteins that you need uh, without adding meat to it. Um, it's very high in fiber. This type of fiber is a soluble fiber that uh, I would have the patients that uh, are having trouble with diarrhea, I want them to increase the cycle fiber. So this is a very good source of that. Also iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, zinc, and B vitamins. This is a wonderful uh, food item. And if you haven't tried it um, and you don't, and you need some recipes ideas, 
be sure and, um, and ask me because I think uh, I would love to see people trying to, to increase this in their diet. I want you to consume more complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates are basically from uh, whole grains and, and beans. They um, digest slow in your system and there's two types. There's fi uh, soluble fibers. Those are the ones that actually uh, the body absorbs and, and it forms gels and it moves slowly through your GI tract. And those are my favorites to use with my patients that are having diarrhea problems because they actually help the bottom, uh, the colon reabsorb water. So this is a, a, a probably the type of fiber I use more often with my patients than insoluble fibers. Insoluble fibers with a, a person that has a normal GI tract are very important because they help they move quickly through the body, they, very, they don't change their structure, and they form the bulk of the stool. So that way things don't just stay in your system. We want, if you have a normal GI tract, we want things to move fairly quickly through and so that you have a regular uh, bowel movement usually once a day. So that's um, my, uh, my, my key to uh, trying to change the types of fibers that you use. Um, whole grains uh, can be also uh, very important in pro providing nutrients such as vitamins, phytochemicals, we talked about the phytoestrogens earlier, um, and also uh, many of the antioxidants that I see people trying to get in their diet or trust many times they'll go and try to buy these at the store. But you can get most of these in these nutrients. I use um, oatmeal a tremendous amount and I have some of my patients that I think that when nothing else works that whole grain from the oatmeal will really help reduce that diarrhea so it's another one of the products that I try to increase in my patients diets we talked a little bit about beans earlier these are very very important in your diet uh, again try to use the ones split peas uh, navy beans that are a little bit easier to digest uh, potatoes. Potatoes have gotten a very bad rap, so have most of the white foods out there. And when I'm trying to change people's eating habits because of they have chronic diarrhea, uh, and I tell them, I now want you to eat white bread and, and white potatoes, they kind of look at me like I'm crazy. But these things are really have very high nutrients, and they have a lot of vitamin C, and as well as other um, interesting nutrients that um, are, are very beneficial, but they're also very easy to digest. So uh, keep the white beans on your plate if you're one of uh, the many people in this room that may be having trouble with chronic diarrhea. Also the vitamin, uh, the sweet potato is very important nutrient. It does have more fiber and insoluble, and it's a bit gassy, so not everybody's going to tolerate, tolerate it quite as well, but it's very high in vitamin A and very important if you can consume it to try to get this. And another one of the food groups that I think is very important and, and, um, and, and a little bit harder to get into uh, to people's diet are the winter squashes. And these can be acorn and uh, uh, so the spaghetti squash some of y'all may have tried. And it's an interesting thing to cook with, uh, the pumpkins. Uh, pumpkin uh, is one of my favorite uh, uh, vegetables to try to get people to consume. It's very high in nutrients. It's also a soluble fiber. It tends to only come out twice a year in Thanksgiving and maybe Christmas. So I try to get people to get it out of your shelves and, and work with it a little bit more uh, because it really can give you some real uh, important nutrients and, and vitamin A as well as um, the, uh, the carotenes that, uh, that we're trying to get in and potassium, which is also very important for patients that have had diarrhea. And don't forget your fruits. I was very excited about the fruit that was in our salad today, although I know many of my patients are here, may not have been able to eat all the greens that we had on your plate, but we had those pretty vegetables, I mean, our fruits up there, and I hope that you were able to eat those because those are very important uh, nutrients that we can get from these. And many of the antioxidants that we are studying uh, in, in scientific um, research now come from these fruit-based uh, nutrients. And apples are very important. They are very high in sorbitol naturally. And so some patients will, may not tolerate the apples quite so well. And also I try to have patients avoid apple juice after surgeries because they're very gas forming. But with the exception of that, I think that cooking vegetable, uh, the apples can be uh, a very good way to get this, uh, this nutrient in. Uh, berries, of all forms, blueberries, um, we talk about raspberry, black raspberry, black, and, and the powders that we use in, in that, but strawberries, these things all have uh, a really good fiber source, folate, uh, vitamin C, uh, and, and many of the antioxidants that, that we're really trying to get people to consume. 
Um, if you want to, like I, most of this information has comes from the American Institute of Cancer uh, Research, and on their webpage they'll even have a lot of the recipes that you can try using these nutrients, and um, and that may be something that's kind of a different uh, take on some of these. Uh, very important nutrients, but uh, I want you to try them. Um, blueberries, uh, there was a few of those on today, and, and there's very interesting uh, nutrients coming from this area, and I think that we'll see more of the benefits of this as we go along. But it's very easy to uh, mix these. Uh, again, we talk about my oatmeal, so little blueberries and oatmeal in the morning may make a very good breakfast, uh, and you don't have to add a lot of sweet because they're so naturally sweet. Uh, you don't have to add that sugar that may upset your stomach. Cherries are very important also. They have a lot of vitamin C and again these antioxidants and these phytochemicals that I way too often see people go and waste money at the store trying to get and you really just don't need to do that. We can, we can do that right at home by just adding these things that are going to give you so much more value. Because remember, we're discovering and I, Dr. Go has been, he, he doesn't tell everybody just really what he's done in the field of nutrition. But he, along with many of the scientific researchers through the years, have discovered new nutrients all the time. And if we don't eat the foods, we may be missing something because we may not know to put it in the bottle yet. So remember that this variety of, uh, of nutrients that we get from these food products are very, very important because we just, we, we're discovering new things all the time in the food area. Uh, grapes is, a, is another place where we see uh, the, the, um, these nutrients come up and also uh, very important. Uh, and if you can tolerate the juices, grape juice is fine and you get some of this. You don't have to drink the wine for the heart disease. You can actually use grape juice. If you're having diarrhea, mix that grape juice with at least half water, sometimes just a three to one mixture of, uh, of water with your juices to improve the tolerance. Uh, otherwise, they tend to cause the diarrhea to be worse. Vegetables, there are a couple of classes of vegetables that are very beneficial and probably the first one I want to talk about is the, what we call cruciferous vegetables. These have important uh, cancer fighting mechanisms uh, or enzymes and, and nutrients in it. Uh, they're full of fiber. Um, if you are um, not having diarrhea or gas, this is probably uh, something I would like to see on your plate as often as we can. Uh, there's some interesting studies that have just been released. Uh, some of the meats we didn't talk a lot about about today, uh, it's a subject in itself, but when we're cooking proteins, animal proteins, and you burn them, you get that charred part of it, 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 uh, it you get a heter what's called a heterocycular amine, and these we know may be a carcinogenic. So um, if you add, there, the study was done on uh, Brussels sprouts, and by consuming Brussels sprouts with the, the red meat, it actually reduced the carcinogenic effect by uh, 50, 48 percent. So these things are great things to add when you're when you're using other foods that may not be quite so good for you. Um, also, uh, dark green leafy vegetables. If you can tolerate this and have a normal GI tract, we definitely want you to get them. Uh, if you're having trouble with diarrhea, many times we uh, have patients chop these things very small. And we'll talk a little bit more about altering the diet a uh, little bit, but or cooking them, and then you can tolerate them better. A lot of times the raw Greek leafy vegetables are just not uh, tolerated quite so well by the majority of my patients. Um, tomatoes have a wonderful, wonderful um, source of vitamin C, as well as lycopene, which is being studied in many areas of uh, research for cancer um, benefits. Uh, prostate cancer came out with a great one, um, and these can be cooked products, tomato paste. Uh, if, the, if you have trouble with acid, sometimes the fresh ones don't work so well, but sometimes you can really do okay with the tomato paste. Garlic and onions, which are um, also uh, used widely in South Louisiana, we have it in nearly everything you eat. Uh, so we're actually, as bad as our diet is, we do some things that are very good down here, and uh, those are two of the things that we do uh, well with, is our onions and our garlics. But these have great benefits, and I would like for you to try to use these in your diet when you can. Now, if you have, um, having a lot of diarrhea or a lot of gas, you may only be able to use the green part like chives to get that onion flavor and benefits um, and, and so we try to change that a little bit. So remember that if you can't eat the whole onion, then still stick with the chives. And then fluids. Um, it's very important that we get the fluids um, that you need in a day. Most people need uh, to match, be able to match their 
uh, uh, fluids uh, with the amount of calories they get in a day, or around two liters of fluid. We say six to eight glasses of fluid. And if you've been on the diets for short bowel, or several of them that I put you on for diarrhea, I have you separate your liquids by 30 to 45 minutes away from your foods. But I don't want you to forget to consume them. It's very important that you get fluid because the side effects uh, and dehydration uh, can put you in the hospital. But some of the good places to get this can be vegetable juices, and there's many of y'all, and there's everybody selling something on the TV that can grind all this up, and you can take those, make these juices at home now. You don't have to actually buy them at the grocery store, and that's fine. I think that most of these vegetables, as long as you clean them very good, rinse them very well, can be used in these type systems. Um, if you're having trouble with diarrhea, I usually have my patients cook them. I say cook them southern soft because the tolerance is better. Um, and actually, uh, it's, if we can chop them up, we'll talk a little bit about that again, um, this will help you get a head start on that chewing. Uh, chewing sometimes is not done near uh, effective as much as we need to. People take two or three bites and swallow, and we really need to chew things uh, well enough so that we can begin that digestive uh, enzymes, uh, being able to use uh, your saliva glands. Uh, smoothies are also very good. Uh, that, that's something that you can buy at some of the stores, but many times they're putting sugar sources in there that uh, may actually cause you some irritation in your GI tract. So again, you may want to try these at home uh, using fruits that are soft. Uh, most fruits, I want you to try to peel them first if you've had diarrhea so that you don't have the inside of fiber that increases this diarrhea. Um, and some of, the, some of them I'm going to probably get you to cook uh, so that they're soft. Uh, there are a few fruits that um, some of the patients have uh, it, uh, problems with and, and you've read a lot about or you may have seen things about amines and amines are developed from uh, the aging process of foods um, and some of these in high amounts can cause you to have flushing. So um, if you're having flushing, definitely check with one of us and see if we can uh, make sure that the, the sources of your fruits and vegetables are not contributing to your flushing. Um, but they can be used uh, very effectively in these smoothies. Also, you can mix them with plain yogurts uh, and soy, and also you can use some of the approved, approved protein powders, uh, and uh, not the ones necessarily that you can find at the uh, drugstore uh, over the counter, but there are, we do use protein powders in some of the patients that we need to give, they're just not getting enough in their diet. So these can be used in, um, in there. And also just plain old dry powdered milk. Dried powdered milk is probably the least expensive protein powder you'll ever find, and it, uh, it is used um, very effectively in adding protein, uh, to, and especially when you're not eating a whole lot of food at one time. Tea is also, for the most part, very, uh, it can be uh, used in your, um, in your diet or as your fluid, as long as it, you can tolerate the caffeine. Uh, caffeine, it, many people are very caffeine sensitive, and this is, uh, carcinoma is definitely no exception to that. It can cause several reactions in patients. It also increases the, um, the transit time. So I usually try to have patients use caffeine-free foods choices uh, and drinks uh, mainly. Uh, but they also have a lot of uh, very important antioxidant properties, so uh, they can be uh, beneficial to us. And then herbs, spices, and season. I'll say bring them on. This is a wonderful place to get very important nutrients and a great way to, to enhance the flavors in your meals. Uh, there's more studies going on in this area to show very good uh, reasons why we should include these in our diet. Uh, the, um, they have, some of them have, um, most of them actually have an antimicrobial effect and antioxidant properties. I put down some of the herbs, I did not put by a long shot all of them, uh, but these things can be used to flavor your food, basil, oregano, rosemary, uh, I put red peppers in there, although they're vegetable, we definitely use those a lot of times in the herbs. Lemon rinds, lemon rinds can be, just scrape those lemon rinds and add them to your foods because it really has, those oils have some really rich and really important nutrients that have been used for many centuries. And uh, I don't want you to, to, to forget that, but they also give you that little little bite that really gives a lot of spring to uh, many foods and, and desserts. And, and so that's something that can really be helpful uh, to change your diet up a little bit. So, uh, cilantro, uh, sl uh, uh, tarragon, and here are the chives in again. Um, this is by no means the, 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 the long list. 
But we know that some of the studies that were done this year, uh, the last couple of years, have shown that if you put these in this mixture of nutrients in with even some of the foods we say are not so good, like the hamburger, uh, if you put these in the hamburger, it actually reduced the carcinogenic effect by 78%. So by uh, mixing those herbs in there, uh, we may actually uh, be preventing other problems. So definitely want that to be included in your list of things to try. Also spices, now we know that the, some of the, we talk about spices down here, people think of hot, but there's many spices that are not hot to touch by your tongue and they don't irritate your GI tract. And these can be cinnamon and ginger and nutmeg. Some of these can actually reduce the motility in your GI tract. Uh, some of these have been being studied for uh, prevention of cancers. So uh, this is another place that I want to uh, encourage you to really, if you haven't tried or you come from places where you don't use so many of these spices, try them in your diet. You'd be surprised at how much uh, you, 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 you really can enjoy learning to cook with these. The American Institute of Cancer Research recommended uh, back in 2007 uh, how they felt like the American um, plate should look. And this is what they came up with. And then after that, they came back and said that these same recommendations are for cancer survivors. So if you're in this room, you're surviving. So this is a little bit about how we want you to eat. Two thirds of your plate should be plant-based. This is a vegetables and starches, and then one-third uh, protein source. And this one is showing an animal a protein source. When you're making food selections, try to do local products. Sometimes we get into controversy over what's added to foods and the additives, and there's a big concerns about, um, you, know, if it, you know, should we do organic, you know, organic, and all this. But when you find local producers, you can usually find out what they're doing with uh, the foods that they're they're producing, and that way uh, you have uh, a lot more comfort of um, eating foods that are safe. So I definitely want you to encourage you to do more of this. We also, have, uh, if you're hunters, uh, venison and rabbit and game, and down here alligator uh, are very good sources. They're very lean, and uh, and I didn't add the turtle and all the other things. My uh, my husband's originally from down here in the bayou, and. Uh, I learned a long time ago not to ask what was in things when I go to supper. Uh, I had roadkill for Christmas last year off a little deer that had gotten hit in the street. So I learned a long time ago, just don't ask. Um, but these things are very good, and then they are lean, and they can be used in your diet. Also, bacon, broiling, and microwave, very good, and then uh, a way to prepare. You can even grill, although I recommend that you marinate your meat when you're grilling. We talked a little, I said the word heterocycle, uh, amines that from that charring, but if you marinate the meat, you actually reduce the, uh, the, the effects of that by, again, close to 50%. So uh, marinate the, the, the meat first. And then we want you, uh, many times you're just tired and fatigued, and I'm also trying to teach uh, traditional non-cookers in the family how to cook. So try to do things that are easy and um, that, that are already partially prepared for you. Buying chicken breasts already skinned so that you don't have to cut up a chicken. Um, using things that you can make into patties so that you can just kind of put them in and grill them slightly uh, and, and then it'd be done. Uh, using instant potatoes when you don't want to have to peel all those potatoes and dice them up, that's okay. Um, you can use these products. Uh, minute rice, it, you know, so that you don't have to spend all day trying to get a meal together. Because usually, if you're having to produce meals for your family, it'll wear you out before you ever sit down and eat, and then that contributes to weight loss. So remember that uh, having things a little bit made for you is okay. You don't have to cook everything from scratch anymore. Also, chopping vegetables. Um, very fine. We're very <coughs> fortunate down here because we can actually buy things already chopped up. Very fine and they call it a Creole seasoning, and, and you can buy this in nearly every store here, but I've gone uh, to many places and I've gotten so spoiled that you can't go and just pick these things up. But by finally chopping those fruits and vegetables ahead of time, or buying them already chopped, that, uh, that really is gonna reduce the amount of uh, uh, fatigue that you may get from preparing a meal. And this uh, is one size doesn't fit all, and that's very true when we're talking about people living with neuroendocrine uh, tumors because we have different abilities to do activity. We have to watch the amounts of the different foods that you use or when you use certain foods. 
We can actually slowly put many foods back into your system, even if we've had to pull them out for a while. And so it's very important that everybody realizes that you're an individual and we have to treat you as an individual. And it's very important for me as I'm trying to uh, explain to my patients um, that what they read on the net was good for their partner may not be good for them. So remember, everybody's an individual. And so when we start altering your diet, it's usually, when you sit down with me, it's really something that I want you to, to, to take to heart as important for you. Um, we talked a little bit about chewing. I cannot emphasize this enough. It's very important that you chew your foods completely. We want them to be as, as, as chewed and, and, and as mushy as they can get as they go down your throat. Also chopping them or mashing them beforehand. I'm great on, I believe in the blender and, and I really believe that if I can get a, if I could get people that are having a lot of trouble with their digestive issues to even uh, really start eating more uh, foods that are already broken down, that that probably can help them a little bit. Just, uh, I think that I see a better tolerance sometimes. And sometimes post-op, I see the same thing. We go back down to uh, not baby food, but real soft foods for a while. We want to make sure that we can increase, and especially in patients if you're having trouble losing weight, we'll make sure we have enough calorie, what we call calorie protein dense foods. Foods that are going to give you nutrients even if you're only eating two to three bites of it, that you're going to get something in that two to three bites. And these foods are found in books such as, um, there's a, a, one of the handouts by the uh, National Cancer Institute called Eating Hints for Cancer Patients. The back of the book will give you a huge list of these foods. And if you have problems getting those, all you do is get in touch with me. I'll be glad to help you with those. But also, we want, if you know that there's a food that's going to cause you trouble, and most of us can identify these foods, just try to avoid it. It's, it's, sometimes it's hard to do. You like these foods. You love ice cream before you go to sleep at night. But you know that ice cream's not going to settle with, with you. Try to find something that's similar to ice cream, but that you can tolerate. Or get a sugar-free, low-fat ice cream that you can tolerate. Try to get substitutions for those things that you really are having a hard time adjusting to having those left out of your diet. And then eat smaller portions, but eat more frequently. That way, we just can get a better digestion of these foods between meals. I really like people to eat six small feedings a day. And then liquids, we I talked about this before, but we want to make sure that you may limit them or adjust them to before or after the meals, but don't avoid them because we really want to make sure that we keep you hydrated well. Keeping out on the portions. Uh, the typical American diet is that first, uh, you'll see on the first side, and this diet has uh, about 1,300 calories in it, uh, and that's easy to do. If you go to any restaurant down here, I can guarantee you're going to get that much. But if that same meal, types of foods, can be put on an 8-inch plate, which is the type of plate that, uh, the to-go plates that you may have seen that are sectioned out, those are about, about an 8-inch plate, you can, um, you can get a still a very healthy meal without overeating. Adjust to your symptoms. If you're having diarrhea, you may have to reduce the concentrated sweets in your diet. We also have insoluble fibers that we may have to reduce. I use a rapid transit diet, which is foods I take out that I think are going to move through you too fast. Dumping diet, where we separate your liquids from your solids. There's a new diet that's been used in irritable bowel called the FODMAP diet, and the patients that are having a lot of gas this has been very helpful. If you're nauseated, reduce your amount of red meats, that's our fatty fit meats. These things are slow to digest and can contribute to the nausea. Avoid things that have real high smells. Many times, the, um, the smells or bright colors can cause a trigger of the nausea. Also use a low fat diet because the fats do digest slow. And if you're constipated, increase your insoluble fibers and also increase your fiber, I mean your fluids to help improve this. Make sure that you know how to read a label. And if you don't, ask a dietitian or, or ask one of us to sit down with you. Enteral products can be helpful in, um, in trying to meet the nutrients that you may not get. These can be done through many products, carnation, instant breakfast. Ensure if you don't have diarrhea. If you do have diarrhea, you'll need a product that's sugar-free, such as glucosarna or carnation instant breakfast that's sugar-free. There are some specialty products that we use. Um, Juven, if you're pre-op or post-op, has a certain kind of amino acid that we use. And there's many other of these that is you decrease the ability to digest that we may have to use to provide 
do the nutrients that you need. Vitamins are very important for us, but they should be taken when you eat your meals so that they actually can work the best. We want you to get about 100%. We don't need mega vitamins. We don't need 1,000% of these things because vitamins are not a place where if a little bit's good, a lot's better. We don't want to get into that um, with these, uh, these type of things because they can have real severe toxicities and side effects. There's water soluble vitamins, and these are the vitamins, B vitamins, and the C. That if you don't, if you do overtake these, they're going to be able to just you'll lose them in a day through your urine and sweat. But fat soluble vitamins, which are A, D, E, and K, they store in your body and your liver in this one place that we really don't want you to uh, overconsume. Now, some people don't are not able to absorb these fat soluble vitamins because their fat's uh, malabsorbing, and if that happens then we have, we have a special vitamin that we can give you to replace these nutrients. And also minerals such as iron and calcium. You want to talk to your doctor to make sure that you're getting what you need, but always discuss this with your doctor and use their recommendations. Remember that natural does not mean safe. The NIH surveys back in 2003 estimated that $33.9 billion a year are spent in complementary alternative medicine. I say in my next lifetime, I'm going to sell all this. Then it may be, you know, I'll make a lot of money because the people are willing to buy just nearly anything. And this is a very vulnerable group. Uh, and, and so people are usually praying. But it's illegal. It's illegal for them to say that a product treats, prevents, or cures disease. So if you see that, then there's a problem. And also investigations have proven that these have been done and, and that people will sell you and say anything. So a couple of them that we really worry about are St. John's wort and ginkgo bilbo and ginseng. Be informed before you take supplements. Make sure you're getting the whole story. If it sounds too good to be true, it should be a red flag. And remember, complementary therapies are that. They don't replace conventional treatment. Remember that the FDA recommends that you discuss all all nutrients, all supplements be discussed with your physician. And do not take these supplements to prevent cancer. Adjust your diet as your symptoms are progress. Use what the experts say are beneficial recommendations, and these can be found from the American Institute of Cancer Research, such as staying the same weight throughout your lifetime, getting regular exercise, and watching your diet and eating more plant-based diet. This is the same slide. Okay. Remember, make the best uh, choices that your symptoms will allow. And make sure that your, your resources are reliable. Um, and here we have a couple of the ones that are very important for you to, to, to make sure that you can, um, the information that you get in the area of cancer are reliable because people will tell you anything these days. There are some sources, and I'll be glad to share these with you, uh, that can give you some great recipes, and these are all very uh, well uh, read and very uh, beneficial and can help you make better choices. And remember that if you have neuroendocrine tumors, you have special challenges. So making, we may have to do some modifying with your diet or changing your diet slightly, but we can help you with that. And don't be afraid to ask for a nutritionist or someone that knows what they're doing. Thank you very much.